Hi everyone, this is a, uh, a Lexmos 8-bit gimbal controller here. Uh, this is the two-channel version um, and it's on a, uh, a gimbal for a Mobius here. This is a two-motor um, two gimbal. Um, this actually came on my Deadcat Pro. Um, and I'm going back to, to walk through uh, a setup of the, the board and the, the software. Um, you've had a few weird um, issues with it, so I thought I'd just walk through reconfiguring the software. There are a couple of different problems that people seem to have with this um, this gimbal controller, and we're going to just um, demonstrate what they are. So the first thing is um, where the gimbal is, is limp and um, doesn't react. So let's just plug this in and we'll see. So I'm powering this from a 12 volt supply. Um, this board is 3 or 4S compatible, I believe. Um, I'm not 100% certain, but um, uh, I'm pretty sure I read it was a 3 or 4S supply, but obviously with your board, just check that you've got the, the same board. There are a lot of clones out there and a lot of different types of these um, base cam boards. So just check. So we're gonna power up and we're gonna have a quick look. Okay, so we're all powered up now. So, so you can see we're not, the gimbal isn't setting itself and um, that's because it's basically not calibrating itself. So you can see up here these lights on here. Um, I don't know if you can see, but there's a, uh, a red light on here, which is a power light. A blue light, which I think is the gyro or maybe the accelerometer. But the green light essentially is a one that's flashing to say it's not able to, to calibrate. Um, so what you need to do to calibrate this or to, you know, to, to get it set, initialized properly, is to hold the gimbal in place for three to four seconds and it initializes. So let's just try that again by holding it in place. Okay, so you see that's now doing something. This is called the twitch of doom, I call it. Um, you'll see that the accelerometer is going absolutely banzai. <laughs> this just means it's not configured correctly. And this is the other problem that you often see is it twitching around like mad trying to, trying to reset itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through the software and um, talk through how to configure it correctly. Okay, so we need to download the software and install the software that supports this. But first things first, let's get this plugged into our computer using the USB connection here. You can do this without the power on. Okay, so first thing we want to do is to um, download and install the software. So we're going to um, we're going to pop over to the Basecam Electronics website, who are the uh, supplier of the board and um, and the software. Uh, if you go to products, and then across to the archive products, because the the 8-bit controllers aren't sold anymore. So just click on that, um, and then scroll down here on the download section. There's more downloads. Here we are, and we've got the, the, upload, the downloads for the 8-bit board. Uh, so we're going to jump straight to the, the latest version of the software for the 8-bit board. So we want to download two things. We want to download the uh, firmware for the genuine boards, assuming your board is genuine. Otherwise, um, I guess the clone version is here. We're not going to cover that. But So download this, and also the GUI, which is the software that allows you to configure it. So that software requires um, the Java runtime to be installed. So um, I'm not going to run through the installation of that software. Effectively, you just need to extract this um, software and then run the the exe that's in that file in that folder. Okay, so this is a simple BGC software. This is a software that Basecam uh, provides you to con configure your your gimbal controller so we have a com port here which normally only has one that we click connect to this is a com port obviously that's connected to your board and once we're connected we can see the version of your board and then the firmware version so i've already flashed the firmware to 2.4 um, but we'll do it again just to show you the process so if we come over here to the firmware upgrade browse to um, the um, Browse to where you downloaded the, the firmware to. And then click the flash. And like any flashing, you probably want to make sure that it doesn't turn itself off during the process. You see the board has flashed once it's done. Okay. Okay, so if we go back to the basic tab, 
Um, so let's have a look at the configuration here. Um, there's a few important things here. I think the primary one is the sensor alignment. So let's just talk briefly about the sensor alignment. Okay, if we have a look at the uh, the gimbal, you'll see there's a um, there's a sensor that you place on the bottom of the of the board, um, and it's important. We have to tell the software um, essentially how that's been placed on your on your board. Uh, sorry, on 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 your gimbal, um, so it can work out which way's up, which way's down, etc. So the general rule of thumb is, if you look at the top of your sensor here, um, you have um, the directions as far as the software is concerned is up and down is, is Z. So if we look at it from this direction, this is Z, this is minus Z, this is Y, and this is X. Okay, so when we align the gimbal in the correct way, so like this, we need to tell it which way um, it's configured. So again, remember this is the Z axis, this is a Y axis, and this is the x-axis. So if we go back to the software and we have a look at it. Okay, so if we have a look at the software, we can see straight away that uh, something's not quite right here. We can, this gives us an indication that our, um, our pitch is, uh, is incorrect anyway. And we know if we go back and have a look at the camera. So remember we said this is the z-axis up and down. So because this is inverted, we need to set this as saying at the top of the controller of the sensor is minus Z. Okay, and then we need to the software needs to know which is the right side of the gimbal. And again, we know that's going to be X because remember X was this direction, whereas Y was this direction. Okay, so we're going to write that to the board. Okay, so that's the first stage uh, is to just tell it properly where the where the sensor is. Next stage is to calibrate the accelerometer. Okay, so we're going to switch back to the camera now. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to calibrate the accelerometer. So strangely, the way you, you calibrate it is by placing the camera upright. Now, I'm just going to turn this round and do this. So um, we'll place it like this. So you can see the lights here flashing away. So I'm going to click now, calibrate accelerometer on the software. You see it flashes away. And then go solid. Okay, and if we just hold the, the board up, we should now see um, on the software uh, that the roll matches the roll direction of the gimbal and the pitch direction. So that's all good. Okay, so once we've, we've set these values, we want to write them to the board so that they are pre uh, sent to the board itself. Okay, if we plug the board in now, we'll see um, if we still get the twitch, twitchiness. Okay, so that's all good. Okay, so we're gonna calibrate the motors next. So we're gonna do an auto motor calibration. Okay, so you can see it's done auto calibration here. Um, one of the things I felt was, I didn't feel this was, the motor power was strong enough because I, when I did some testing on here, twitching, etc., occasionally the motor wouldn't, would struggle to get it back. So I actually increased the power slightly. Okay, so you can see it's detected correctly here that the, the motor direction is inverted for the, uh, for the roll motor, which is great. 
Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to test that this uh, initialized correctly using those settings. Um, so if we unplug the USB, because uh, the USB provides power into the board and we want to make sure that this initializes correctly. So remember what I said, we power this in and we need to hold the gimbal relatively still for three or four seconds while it initializes. So we're plugging it in here. I'm just going to try and do it via holding it. And this is a bit of a... Um, Hit and miss, to be honest. So let's try unplugging it and plug it in again. In fact, one way of doing it uh, is to leave it on the on the table, but um, it's a bit of a fake, I suppose. So let's just try it again. Just power it up, bring it up, and hold it as still as we can. There we go. Okay, so it's initialized okay, so we've got some gimbalish movement, as we can see here. What I want to do is to just change the settings for that horrible noise. So let's just unplug this and plug it back into the USB. Okay, back over here. So the way of getting rid of that horrible whine is to go to advanced and to change its PWM frequency from low noisy to high silent, which um, apparently requires slightly more from the, the motors, the power uh, we need um, to, to do that, we need to have a slightly higher power in the motor anyway, so that increase was probably a good thing anyway. Okay, let's write that into here and we'll power up again and take a look, see if it's got rid of that horrible whine. Okay, okay, so let's plug in now and see if we've got rid of that horrible whine. I'm going to cheat here and let it initialize on the deck on the table. There we go. Ah, listen to that, or not listen to that. Okay, so there we are. So we've got the, the basics of the gimbal working okay, and um, yeah, it looks okay, doesn't it? Great stuff. Okay, so there are some things we can change on here to improve performance. So the PID controller here, um, these settings here can be adjusted if we if we find we need to. Um, the P setting is the thing that gives you the crispness. Um, so you can try and increase this a little bit. I find that this fact these values work really well. Fifteen. The rest of these values are uh, standard PID tuning loops, so uh, uh, that's a whole topic in itself. So I'm not going to go into these. All I would say is if you find you're getting a bit of drift, then you will probably want to increase your eye value. If you find the the motors aren't quite keeping the, the gimbal crisp, there's a little bit of a little bit of wobble in there, you can increase your P. Um, as you increase your P, you might also need to increase your, your motor power um, to um, uh, to, to help you with that. Again, it's always worth checking once you've got your, your settings in there that your motors aren't getting too hot um, because that's a good sign that your PID loop isn't quite right. Okay, so some of the other things we want to check on here as well are the uh, the motor outputs are enabled correctly. So your roll is your roll out um, channel and your pitch is your pitch out channel. This is just the two channel gimbal so you can see that the, you're disabled. These relate to the connections on your board here. So you can see these are the ones that connect to your your or, or roll, gim, uh, roll motors so you need to make sure those are configured correctly. Okay, so that's um, that's the basics of getting it working. So um, this this will provide you with obviously a, a pretty good um, picture. The other thing this supports obviously is being able to um, control the gimbal from your from a, a, a radio, so or from a flight controller. So we have inputs here where we can drive using the PWM signal signal uh, from your con your uh, radio. Um, the roll and the uh, the pan of the um, sorry the roll and the pitch of your camera so we can control the pitch up and down and we can control the roll um, on that axis. Okay, so if we have a look at the board here, hopefully you can see the um, up here we have the channels um, for the input. So you can see here it's telling us that there's an RXP, you can see there, RXP and an RXR. Um, down here and they, that's referring to this 
block of four here. So the RX um, R is the channel that controls roll and the RX P is the channel that controls the pitch. So we're going to get set up and see if we can control this with a radio. Okay. Okay, so here's my um, my receiver here. I have a couple of outputs coming from channel one and two. So I'm going to control the um, roll with channel two and the pitch with channel three. Okay, so we just need to plug these into the correct channel in here. So if we look at this, this is indicating that the the upper pin is ground, five volts in the middle. So we know the roll controller is a second one and double check ground at the top there we go plug that in there it's a bit tight here plug the other one in okay so power the receiver Yes, power the receiver. Okay, so I have this channel set up here. We just want to go back to the GUI and make sure that in our RC settings tab, we have here the, the pitch being controlled by um, RC roll PWM and the pitch likewise. You can see up here we have on the RC roll pin mode, we can either have um, normal, which is basically a PWM uh, signal per channel, or we can have some PPM, which I believe is S bus. I'm not entirely sure, but I, I suspect that's what that is. Um, and then I guess we can map those to the virtual channels coming back on the uh, in in the inputs on that channel. But anyway, we're going to use standard PP, P, PWM. Okay, so that all looks okay. So let's. Um, uh, let's connect the board and initialize it up and see if we have control of that. Okay, so our gimbal's initialized now. Let's see if we have control. So here's my radio here. So there we go, we have roll and we have pitch. Great stuff.